Stephen Roberts is from Lamina. He is live from our Sydney CBD studio for some instant reaction to the numbers today. Stephen, warm welcome into the show. Just as a broad barometer of where China heads, are you liking the series or do you find that it's patchy at best when it comes to indicating uh, future trajectories? For years, Looks. where we've seen the index go into the low 40s twice over the last couple of years and bounce back out again quite sharply towards 52. So it's a little bit difficult to draw too many conclusions from it. I think what you can say when it's been trending down the way it has the last few months is that uh, industrial production is growing slower than it was. Uh, so we've gone down from the high nines into the eights and uh, I suspect that we're heading down into something in the sevens uh, with what the index is suggesting. But also I think the authorities will probably respond to it. Mm. So they've made it plain that uh, there is a lower limit on where they'd like growth to go. That's interesting because we know our Reserve Bank tends to distance itself from what it regards as noisy data reports, not least of all, you can probably include HSBC's series. The reality is, is it not, Stephen, this is an economy that's decelerating. The government has objectives behind that. You say there is a lower limit that they will then intervene over. What would that limit be? I think if it started getting down into the low 7% on a year-on-year -year basis, and we're not there yet because when we get the first quarter GDP reading, I should imagine the figure we got today is fairly consistent with around 7.4%. Mm. But if it were to slow towards 7.2 or 7.3, then you would expect to see some policy response. And the great thing about China is there's many levers it can move. It's not in the same position as many developed economies. Have you got a sense as to where they strike first, what is least, I suppose, bubble-esque at the moment. <laughs> yes. Well, I suppose yeah. <laughs> the reserve ratio requirement for banks mm. is one area obviously they could touch. That's their monetary policy tool. Mm. In time, they'll have a better monetary policy tool because they don't quite use interest rates the way that we do in the West, but in time they will. But mm. for the time being, they tend to use the reserve ratio requirement, and certainly they could touch that at some point over the course of the next few months. Mm. And the inflation rate allows them to do that too because the inflation rates actually behave quite well in China yeah. over the last month or two. Do you like also HSBC's own uh, forward projection that also possibly a lowering of entry barriers for private investment uh, could be a, a sort of a, a quick solve solution here? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, a lot of these reforms are starting to come through, and they're coming through in quite large number. It was only just over a week ago that uh, they spoke about their urbanisation plans for 2020. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're going to reduce investment spending in cities, it's actually they're going to increase it, particularly on rail. And uh, depending on the size of the city, they either get conventional rail or they get high speed rail. But there's no sign that uh, they intend to really allow the economy to slow back much. When it comes to a local reaction to this, we saw the dollar immediately sold off, but then show mm. remarkable resilience. The mm. RBA would be welcoming downward pressure. The problem is it doesn't last. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, for the time being, we tend to get these small reductions in the Australian dollar on these sorts of data reads from China, and they're becoming less pronounced because now there's an expectation that if growth is not quite what the authorities want, they'll be stepping in soon to try and boost it. Mm -hmm. So that tends to bring the Australian dollar back up. And the other factor in the Australian dollar story is what's happening to the US dollar as well. So whenever there's a story that the US dollar might be somewhat stronger, and when we went back to the FOMC meeting in the United States last week, and it appeared as if there's a possibility they might start lifting interest rates perhaps a touch sooner than previously expected. We got a, a minor blip up in the US dollar, a minor blip down in the Australian dollar, but again it didn't carry too far. So I suspect there's going to be pretty hard work uh, getting the Australian dollar uh, down from here. We did see a move in the Fed Fund's futures as they began to reprice all that in. From your judgment, Stephen, where do you see, uh, I suppose, tightening realistically occurring? What, what, what will you be linking any justification 
on tightening too? I think in the case of the United States, mm. a lot depends on the data run. And the data run there for the time being is just picking up a little after the weather disruption we had going through January and February. And in particular, the labour market data, I think that's something that uh, the new governor of the Federal Reserve is particularly interested in. So if that shows signs of strengthening, if we start to see wages growth coming through a little bit more powerfully than they have, and they are starting to turn, mm. then maybe that does mean that they can start to lift interest rates very gradually in the United States very late 2014 early 2015 but this is a moving feast uh, they can change their mind very quickly if the data starts to turn have you changed your mid-year target as a result for the a dollar is it what I'm guessing around 88 US cents or am I completely yeah. off the mark Oh no, that's about right. Uh, somewhere between 85 and 88 cents by the end of the year. Mm. And that doesn't rule out that it's going to be a fairly volatile path getting there. And we might see 93 before we see 88. Stephen, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gus. Right. Dr. Stephen Roberts there from Laminar.